Hello again, this is Marty Kine. This is episode three of my Back to Work webinar series. Under 20 minutes, free and easy to use, designed for the people. This one I'm gonna talk about how to design a marketing dashboard. I speak here from experience. I spent many years of my career, uh, formative years in different advertising agencies doing analytics, coming up with things like this, which would be a dashboard. And this is an actual cautionary tale that I'd like to share with you today. Um, I presented this dashboard that we had spent a lot of time working on to the CMO. And you can see that a lot of different data points that were taken from different sources. And, you know, I have to be honest, it took probably a week to, to populate this dashboard. And the CMO looked at it and said, I have no idea what you're trying to tell me. And in retrospect, I think that's probably fair. Um, as much data as is on there, what is the conclusion? So let's not make that mistake. So I wanna talk about visualization. So start with the building blocks here. Visualization really, um, in marketing analytics terms, is a way to organize information. And there are different ways to, to organize information. We can do it linearly, step, step, step. It can be tabular. Um, different things that relate to each other. Hierarchy, so they're related in a certain um, uh, uh, set of, of dominance relationships, then networks, which is um, maybe hierarchical relationships and then locations, such as in geography. And visualization is something that I think like, um, like golf, for instance, to people like me, I'm like, I watch television and golf looks so easy. I'm like, oh, anyone can do that. It's because I've never golfed. A visualization is a craft. And as Stephen Few, one of the gurus says, uh, and he, he wrote an excellent book called Now You See It, which I'd recommend you pick up. The skills required for most effectively displaying information are not intuitive and they rely largely on principles that must be learned. There are probably exceptions out there, geniuses among us, but for the rest of us, we've got to learn these things. Visualization is a craft, so you start with the data, look for patterns in the data, and then come up with a story. And we'll get to what I mean by a story in a moment. The other thing is that our visual system in general is really closer to feeling than thinking. It's not it's not as close to the neocortex as it is to the limbic system. It's more primitive. And uh, when we think about how we process information visually, it really does quite often align with feelings, directly with feelings, kind of like the sense of smell. There are two ways also that we process information in our brain that tie up directly to this story I'm telling you about visualization. And one is um, uh, the fast way, what we call pre-conscious variables. And these are things that our, our brain, our eyes, our visual system notice very quickly, even before sort of we pay attention to it. And things like color, so if you see the, the pink one, we can see that pretty quickly, alignment, brightness, uh, size, if something's a little out of skew, saturation, shape, all this stuff are, these are cues that we pick up really very rapidly and naturally with our brain without even trying. Charts, on the other hand, so things that present information um, in chart form that we're supposed to ponder, that's really part of the neocortex, and that's the part of the brain, the visual system that we process more slowly. So people don't often think about it, but uh, when we're designing any kind of visual display of information, we really are pulling on both parts of the brain. The fast part, where we're noticing things like vivid colors, and we'll notice those first. And then the slow part, which we have to do a little bit of thinking, what does this really mean? Well, you know, what's the takeaway? Um, I'll give you an example, which you will relate to immediately. If you've ever done a dashboard that has red and green up and down arrows, and you've given it to somebody, and, say, and they, you know, you wanted to discuss it, discuss the findings, dig deep, and they look at it and they zero in on the one down red arrow right away. That's all they can see. That's pre-conscious processing. It's um, a color that stands out. That's why I always recommend don't use red and green arrows. <laughs> so there are, uh, in terms of the craft, there are just a few things that you can show with charts. There's a lot, but it, it breaks down into a few things here. Um, comparisons, one thing versus another distribution. So how do a bunch of different um, discrete variables compare uh, uh, over time, how do they distribute across a different disc uh, discrete interval? Then the composition, so how much uh, does one thing make up of another, obviously, and then relationships. How do things relate to one another and things like scatter charts. And there are classic chart types, and in fact, when you're trying to figure out whether to do a bar chart or a a uh, bubble chart or a line chart or whatever, and you're sort of staring at the blank screen, you're like, I don't, I don't really know what to do. Think about what you're trying to show. So 
what's the relationship to data? Are you comparing things? And if you're comparing things, then you look at one up there. You can actually put something like this on the wall. You look at one up there and you say, well, actually, maybe I could do a column chart, chart because I have a few categories, just a few items, and I'm doing a simple comparison. Or you know, I'm doing cyclical data, something that goes around over a period, period of time. Uh, I can do maybe a spider chart, something like that. So there are guidelines to how to, how to pick a chart. And then there's a link down here for you. The other thing is that visualizations, when we do um, dashboards, as I'll show you in a moment, but any kind of data visualization like this one should tell a story. It really should. You're trying to convey not just um, information and time, but something, something important to whoever your executive is, or if it's yourself using this, consuming this information um, that gets you somewhere. You're trying to answer a question or you're trying to you know, probe something that you're curious about and get to, get to a solution. And uh, that's what I mean by a story. If you look at this one here, this was a, it's a picture of the stock market, different categories in the stock market. And red obviously means the stocks went down. You can see, you know, what do you, what's the takeaway here? It's a really bad day for the market. That's a story. It's a simple story, but it is a story and it, it makes it more vivid. Here's probably the most famous visualization of all time um, that I borrowed from uh, Tufti's book, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, which is a classic in this space. And uh, this is Napoleon's, the, Napoleon's army um, retreating from Moscow. So you can see they start out their, their tan and they start out very strong. They go to Moscow, they turn around and come back. The, the width is the size of the army. So it's an extremely depressing, <laughs> depressing visual, but on the other hand, you can see quite vividly what happened. You can see the story. This is the army's getting smaller and smaller. And in fact, there's a point where you can see the, the black band is large and then it gets small. That's where the, um, there's a river. There's a river that's frozen over. And so a lot of it had to do with the temperature. But space and time is the story. The other thing to remember about dashboards is that not only marketers use them. We think we're the only ones who do, but we're not. Um, pilots use them. And in fact, a lot of dashboards are far more important than the ones we design. They are life and death, quite literally. So the design of the dashboard can keep you alive or can you know, do otherwise. Always think about a dashboard as something that is designed for use. It is not uh, something that you're supposed to contemplate. It's not supposed to answer every question you ever had. Depending on the context, that the, the dashboard is sitting in. It's designed to act to be to be used and to be used actively. And just imagine that it's important, you know. So imagine that it's very important the, the use of this dashboard. Um, the same numbers can be presented in a different way depending on the context. Here we have the same things, the RPM, speed, and resource, but they're being presented in very different ways depending on the type of car. I mean, if you're an electric car, what you care about is a resource. Well, how much power do you have left? If you're in a family par car, you want to make sure you're not speeding. Simple as that. So the dashboard is a tool for action, not for curiosity. And that, that's, that would have answered my CMO's complaint in the very beginning. when he said, I don't know what you're trying to tell me here because um, I wasn't really gearing it toward action. I was gearing it toward curiosity, my curiosity, because I wanted to see abs absolutely every metric I could around that particular uh, campaign. So let's get specific now into how to design a dashboard, as I promised. Um, step one, define the scope. So marketing metrics are always an answer to a question. And in fact, if you don't know what the KPI should be for something, just ask yourself, what's the question you're trying to answer? And try to make it specific. The question should never be <laughs> something like, what should I do? That's not a question. That's a, an existential cry for help. Uh, it, it really should be something like, you know, these are big questions. What is marketing is impact on sales? Do our customers find our commerce website easy to use? All of these are questions that point to numbers and those numbers can then be visualized. Um, you'll notice here also in the defining the scope, so what are the key questions? I've divided the enterprise into different parts. So you can see there are four rows there, business, customer operations, and spend. And this is based on, if you know the balance scorecard from the 90s, just the idea of um, make sure that you're looking at your enterprise, your scope holistically. What is the, what is the scope? of your dashboard. Is it only search? Is that it? All you care about is paid search? Well, then your, your rows would be all related to search somehow, maybe different divisions or something. But that what I'm designing here is a CMO level dashboard. It's a high level dashboard. And you wanna make sure you don't forget any part of the equation. Um, you see customer in there, voice of the customer. How's the customer reacting? 
that's a part that you don't want to forget. Um, obviously, you know, they'll, they'll look at, at business and spend, um, but maybe the customer is being neglected or maybe the operations are. So functional areas are the horizontal bands, and those, that's what I just described. A functional area is a discrete area of the business um, over which whoever is using your dash dashboard as a tool has some kind of sway. So make sure that you, you um, uh, recognize each of these functional areas, and those will be your rows, the, the row areas of the dashboard. Then the next thing is the time dimension, and I think in our culture, at any rate, we read from left to right. So I would recommend putting things that, that describe the past on the left, things that talk about the present in the future, and things that talk about, uh, in the middle, I mean, and things that talk about the future that are more predictive on the right. And that's just a natural way to look at a dashboard. Um, they aren't often designed this way, but I think that it works quite nicely. And I have these categories, descriptive, diagnostic, and predictive. Descriptive analytics is really um, what happened. So that would be like a report on a campaign that happened last week, last month. Diagnostic is what's happening now. So this would be key measures that, that tell you how your operation is running at the moment. That might be, you know, um, what is your, if you're a publisher, what is the fill rate for certain, you know, impressions? Or it would, it would vary depending. If you're, if you're an email marketer, it would be sort of what's the open rate for the campaign that just went out. And then future is a sense of trying to predict things like pipeline, you know, if you have an active pipeline. Put it all together. We've got uh, functional areas as our rows. We've got past, present, and future as our areas. And you can see the, the KPIs in there are always an answer to a question. And you populate them that way. It looks actually pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's not. You have to talk to the stakeholders in the organization. But in general, this gives you a, a guideline for how to design a dashboard. And then you would put for all these KPIs, you would pick the right chart based on the chart um, rubric that I presented earlier. You would figure out if it's a bar chart or whatever, and then you would, you would just put them on there, the charts. Um, it's as simple as that. Could it be simpler? Eight commandments of dashboard design. So summary, the summary goes on the upper left. That's where the eye gravitates. What does it mean? What's the big takeaway? Time goes left to right. I said that uh, no more than six to nine metrics, big metrics. So keep it, you know, keep it compact. Only include numbers that change. This is a good one. Um, for instance, vanity metrics, things like number of likes on Facebook, that goes up 1.5% a month. I can almost guarantee it. It, it, uh, it does change, I guess, but it doesn't change in any way that's interesting. Don't include it. Only numbers that change in an interesting way. Always have a comparison, previous uh, week, previous month, previous year. There needs to be something to compare it to. Always give a label, source, of course, and then um, fonts and colors, no red and green arrows. Now, just some other tips and suggestions based on um, just sort of random things I've looked at. So personalize your display. It's, it's fun. It can be fun, depending on you know, how serious you are, to uh, make your dashboards a little more whimsical. You can flip the axes. These are not really rules. So you don't have to have the functional areas as rows. You could have them as columns. And there is, um, there is some uh, logic to that. If the, if the columns themselves are critical, so you want to bubble it up, like for instance, here we have the customer row being a column on the right. And, and then you have the summary on the top. Um, that can be a way to kind of vividly, vividly stress that, maintain the spirit, adapt the presentation. So what I'm saying is that these aren't, these aren't hard and fast rules. Path analysis is always interesting. Uh, you can see that in journey analytics. Funnel analysis, changes in customer categories all over time. Real-time inputs are, are good. Sometimes you can get them off APIs. This is a, a tweet stream, a Twitter stream for a fictional company, I think, called Ben's Shoes. But all the bubbles represent a, um, a tweet, a tweeter and the, the um, the size of the bubble is the number of followers that that person has. So you can see right away, uh, if something's green, by the way, that's an automated sentiment analysis. So you, if you see a big green bubble, that's somebody who likes you and says something positive and have, has a lot of influence. If something's big and red, that means you've got to engage. Um, a lot of politicians would use something like this. And then time as a story. This is a, a really interesting um, visualization on a site called informationisbeautiful.net, which I also recommend. And this was um, charting time travel movies and all the different years that the, the characters went to, and they're trying to see if there's a spot where they all met. And there, there is one, the ultra, ultra paradox, where the Terminator meets with uh, the one from um, uh, Butterfly Effect, and then Time Cop shows up. And at any rate, there was a moment when they, they were all in that 
the same time, fictional time and place, but um, think about time as a story and then exploring data in the future, it's, it seems pretty clear to me that something like AR could be a wonderful tool, not just for marketing, but for data exploration. You could literally um, tr treat it the way you, you do as a molecular biologist, where you go into a room, you're wearing the goggles, and um, you can be looking at data in space and sort of manipulating it and look at relationships. And uh, I could see that being a very vis visceral way to explore data if you have you know some big questions to ask. So. How do I sum it up? Well, what to do now? Write down the questions that you need to answer to run the business. And you may not be able to do this on your own. Uh, go to go to your stakeholders. Think of the functional areas. If you're building a CMO level dashboard, what are the areas that are under the CMO's purview? Uh, it's probably the customer is probably one of them. There's probably something around operations, marketing operations. There's definitely something around spending. So, and then sit down with that CMO or the CMO's teams different teams and then ask them what are these questions that you need to run the business you'll have to winnow the list you're going to get some very vague questions um, but you know use your intelligent <laughs> question winnowing skills ask yourself if the current dashboards answer the question the answer will be no um, then redesign them distill the answer as a story always think in terms of that's why i went you know past present future that's a kind of a story structure but um think think what you're trying to tell when you when you're when you're pulling together your summary, you're putting it in the upper left. It's gotta be a kind of a story. So something happened last month that we had terrible weather, retail sales were down. Um, we launched a, a promotion, they ticked up 5%. Things like that are, they're not only useful, but they can help the decision makers run the, run the business better. So I hope that was useful. That will help we, us all get back to work. That's my cat, Jerry. And uh, thank you for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow.